Dr. Roberts, one of the best surgeons in the country, came to his insurance company and said that he had been robbed right in the street. The assistant asked if Dr. Roberts remembered any specific details about the robber. The surgeon said that he couldn't recollect anything because the robber had been fast. Plus, since Dr. Roberts had extremely poor eyesight, he hadn't seen him clearly. The assistant refused to proceed and said that Dr. Roberts was lying and hadn't been robbed. Why didn't he believe Dr. Roberts? Dr. Roberts is a surgeon. Surgeons usually have excellent eyesight. So why did a highly paid surgeon need the insurance money? Hmm. There was a grand ball organized in honor of Ms. Dell's birthday, and half of the town was invited. Suddenly, the lights in the entire building went off for a couple of minutes. When the lights came back on, Ms. Dell's beautiful diamond earrings were missing. The main suspect was her distant cousin, Sylvia. But the girl said that she had been in the bathroom fixing her makeup. She didn't even notice that the lights had gone out because she'd been busy. Who is lying, Ms. Dell or Sylvia? The lights went out in the entire building. If Sylvia had been fixing her makeup, she would have definitely noticed that something was wrong. Hey, it's dark in here! In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candies. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Relham came back home after a long day at the club. Her three daughters had been staying at home. The woman asked them what they had been doing. Hannah said she'd gone shopping for a new board game and then spent the day playing it with her friends. Elle said that she had been partying with her classmates in the pool. Ava said that she had been binge-watching TV shows all day and eating ice cream. Mrs. Relham could tell that one of her daughters lied. Who was it? It was Hannah. Look, the board game she bought is unpacked. She couldn't be playing it. Four friends were driving to New York City for the weekend. The music in the car was on and everyone was in a good mood, so the driver got distracted and got in a car crash. A police officer arrived and started an investigation. He asked the guys who had been driving, but no one wanted to take the blame. Then the officer inspected the car. Can you tell who was driving? Look, there is a purse hanging on the driver's seat. It must belong to a girl. There's just one girl in the group, so she's likely to be the driver. Mrs. Miller came back home after work and asked what her daughters had been doing all day. They were all grounded and weren't allowed to leave the house or watch TV. Kaylee said that she had been doing housework and had just finished cooking pizza for dinner. Ellery said that she had been upstairs in her room reading. Lilith said that she'd spent the day cleaning her room. Who's lying? It's Kaylee. She said that she had made this pizza herself. But why is there a pizza box in the garbage? She ordered the pizza and was probably doing something else instead. It was a cold fall day. Mr. Jones was at home drinking tea and reading his newspaper. He also peeked out of the window from time to time. There, four teens, Mark, Davin, Bexley, and Penny were having a picnic. Suddenly, a ball broke the window of his living room. The teens started to pack their things. They didn't want to confess who had done this. In the evening, Mr. Jones got a note, but inside, there was just a question mark. Do you know who broke the window? The question mark is a hint. It literally means question mark. So Mark must be the one who did it. Adele found her friend Oliver on the floor of his studio in the attic. She called the police. The officer who came asked the girl to tell him what had happened. 
Adele said that she had been walking past Oliver's house and noticed that the lights had been on. She came up to the window, peeked inside, and saw him on the floor. She called the police and ran into the house. The police didn't believe her. Do you? No, it doesn't sound right. The guy was in the attic. Adele couldn't possibly see him through the window, unless she was 20 feet tall. On Wednesday, a high school student, Layla, went missing. There are three suspects. Mrs. Adams, the director. Mrs. Smith, a school cook. And Mr. Jones, a cleaning man. Mrs. Adams said that she had a lot of work and spent the whole day in her office, never leaving it. Mrs. Smith said that after the working day, she had to stay in the kitchen to do some cleaning before the weekend. Mr. Jones said that he'd left after classes to do some shopping. He only returned several hours later. Who is guilty? There's something suspicious about Mrs. Smith, the cook. It's Wednesday. So what weekend cleaning is she talking about? Tom has lost his car keys. He's searched every corner in every room, but hasn't found them. The guy goes to the farthest room, looks at the floor, and realizes the keys are hanging on the chandelier. How does Tom know that? The floor is reflective. An elderly philosophy teacher began an exam. His students were sitting in their seats, listening to him. Here's a task for you. Prove that everything that happens around me is real, and I'm not sleeping. Whoever writes the most convincing proof will get the highest points. The students had been writing for several hours, but almost no one got a good grade, except for one girl. She wrote an essay consisting of several words. What did she put on paper? You can't read this if you're asleep. By the way, you can use this tip while sleeping. It's almost impossible to read anything in a dream. Therefore, to find out whether you're asleep or not, look at your phone and try to read something. There was an old haunted house in town. Local people were afraid to go there. But one day, three girls and two boys decided to check that place out and record whatever was happening there. They approached the scary building, but one guy, Rob, refused to come in. He said he would wait for his friends outside. The rest of the group went into the house. Rob was nervous. After waiting for them for a few minutes, he was ready to call someone for help. But all four girls and one boy returned at this moment. Rob realized there were g g ghosts in the house and ran away from there. How did he know that? Three girls and one boy were in the house, but five people came out. One girl was a spirit. Rob saw her and ran away. Michael is walking along the sidewalk, holding his hands behind his back. A car appears from around the corner behind him. At this moment, Michael is walking near a big puddle. The driver accelerates. He's going to splash the water all over Michael. But at the last moment, he suddenly slows down and drives around the puddle. Why didn't he drench Michael? Michael was carrying a brick behind his back. The driver was afraid that Michael would throw it at his car, so he didn't drive over the puddle. Alexandra is walking around an old castle. There are lots of portraits of kings and queens on the walls. The corridor is lit by candles. Alexandra goes down to the first floor, where several people are dancing. The girl feels as if she has somehow traveled to the previous century. But wait a minute, this is all fake. How did the girl understand that? A hidden camera is installed in the corner of the hall. Also, that dancing girl has a smartwatch on her wrist, see? It's morning. Bob leaves his house and goes to the beach. The sun is peeking over the horizon. The sea is calm, 
There's no wind. Bob sits down on the sand, closes his eyes, and begins to meditate. Several people come up to Bob and sit down next to him to meditate too. Bob opens his eyes, sees them, and realizes that something's wrong with these people. But what? Look at Bob, and now, at how these people are sitting. They aren't touching the sand. Their bodies are half an inch above the ground. Okay, now let's check and see how many correct answers you got. Zero to three points. Eh, don't get upset. There's no need to try to find stuff everywhere. Sometimes you just need to trust your intuition. Four to seven points. More practice, more riddles, more logical tasks. And next time, you'll definitely get better results. 8 to 11 points. Oh, not bad. But sometimes you probably were inattentive. 12 to 15 points. Wow, nobody can fool you. You can always figure out the truth. You're great, but not the best of the best yet. 16 points. Whoa! You are the king of riddles. You always remain attentive to details. And also, you have awesome intuition. Joy didn't show up and didn't answer her friend's calls. Lucy, Rhonda, and Lily went to visit her. They found the girl in bed, under a blanket. The friends got very scared. Can you tell why? Joy has covered the window with a blackout curtain, and the shape of her ears and teeth has changed. She's turning into a vampire! Lily decided to stay and take care of Joy. Meanwhile, Rhonda offered Lucy to visit her Aunt Vera. She ran a magic shop with different potions. When Vera heard about what happened to Joy, she said, Okay, I need three ingredients to cook a healing drink. Here's the first one. When it comes to me, you go when you see red and stop at green. Can you guess the ingredient? It's watermelon. To get the second ingredient, Vera took Rhonda and Lucy to her cherry garden. Rhonda picked eight cherries, Lucy picked 13, and Vera picked 14. How many apples did they collect together? Zero. Apples don't grow in cherry gardens. Vera gave Lucy and Rhonda a hint about the third ingredient. Here it is. Can you help them crack this rebus? It's Mandragora. Mandragora grew near the spookiest house in town. Vera gave Lucy and Rhonda a task to find it and bring it to her store. While Rhonda was searching in the garden, Lucy decided to get a closer look at the house. She saw a sign with a weird name on it, Siomon Eprik. She went to the huge door and opened it quietly. After Lucy got inside, the door slammed shut behind her back. Tons of vampire bats rushed at her. Lucy started pulling on the door like crazy. Suddenly, she saw that there was something written on it. Change the order of letters in Siomon Eprik. She yelled the answer, and the door opened. What did the girl say? The real name of that place was Creepy Mansion. Rhonda found three root vegetables in the garden, but only one of them was Mandragora. Can you figure out which veggie Rhonda should pick? Even if you've never seen a mandrake, you can eliminate the other plants. This is definitely a carrot, and this is a beet. So the remaining one must be the mandragora. Lucy and Rhonda prepared to leave the spooky house, but suddenly they stepped on a trap hidden in the grass and fell into a deep well. They looked around and found three tunnels leading to freedom. A fire-breathing dragon was waiting in the first tunnel. 
It was very angry and disliked people. There was a portal leading into a black hole in the second tunnel, and huge cacti were growing all over the third tunnel. Their juice was poisonous to any human. Which way should Lucy and Rhonda choose? The third one. Look, those cacti don't have any spines, and no one's gonna force the girls to drink cactus juice. Vera cooked the potion for Joy. Lucy and Rhonda took it to the girl's house. But when they entered her room, it was empty. Joy's parents said that Lily and Joy had left together. They were both acting very weird. Rhonda said, Oh no, they've both turned into vampires. We've got to find them before it's too late. Can you help them find any clues in Joy's room? Look at her laptop. They seem to have bought train tickets to go to Las Vegas to visit Joy's granny. Lucy and Rhonda boarded the train. Besides them, there were four other people in the car. One of these passengers didn't have a ticket. Can you figure out who it is? This woman. She's the only one who's hiding her head behind the headrest of her seat so that the camera doesn't spot her. When the train was going through a tunnel, the lights went out and the passengers got very frightened. When the light turned on again, one of the passengers shouted, Help me! Someone has stolen my bag! Lucy immediately realized who had done this. What about you? Any ideas? Yeah, this guy. There's some makeup lying under his seat, and his window is open. He put the contents of the bag into his backpack, and then threw the bag out the window. Rhonda and Lucy got to Las Vegas and headed for the house where Joy's granny lived. But they kept coming to the wrong houses. In the first house, they met this old lady, and in the second, there was this one. Can you tell which elderly woman is dangerous? It's the second one. She's up to something, while the first one is just getting ready for a Halloween party. Finally, Lucy and Rhonda found the right house. The door was open. When they entered, they saw Joy's granny unconscious on the floor. She had a vampire bite on her neck. Suddenly, Joy and Lily popped out of nowhere. They had pale faces, sharp teeth, and pointy ears. They came closer and closer, ready to bite their friends. Suddenly, Rhonda began laughing and exclaimed, huh, Stop fooling around, it's just a prank! How did she know? The mirror reflects Joy, and Lily casts a shadow. They're not real vampires, it's just a Halloween prank. Joy went to take a shower to remove her vampire makeup. But someone poured paint into the shower head, and the water turned green. Joy questioned Lucy, Rhonda, and Lily. Lucy said, I did my laundry and then went to cook some kiwi jam. Sorry, I gotta go, it might burn. Lily said, I took a shower and washed my hair right before you went in. What happened? Why are you so green? And Rhonda said, I'm studying for my geometry test. Can you keep it down, please? Who pranked Joy? Lily said she'd just washed her hair, but it's dry and braided. Besides, she's wearing a dress under her bathrobe. That's a pretty suspicious outfit. When Nina got better, Abby took her for a walk. They spotted the spookiest house in the neighborhood and decided to check it. <laughs> that was a big mistake. When they got inside, the door behind them suddenly disappeared. Now they have three ways out. There's a zombie behind the first door. A creepy vampire is waiting behind the second door. And there's an angry g -g -g ghost behind the third door. Which way is the safest? They should choose the third door. 
Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't cause any real harm. Okay, well, maybe you might get slimed, but... Nina and Abby found themselves in the next room. The door leading outside was open, and they ran toward it. But an old witch popped out of nowhere and yelled, Hey, <laughs> not so fast. You've got to solve my riddle first. Why are these words in such an order? Nina and Abby failed to crack this riddle. What about you? Here's the correct answer. The words rhyme with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's why they're in this order. The witch teleported Nina and Abby to her basement. But the girls didn't give up and found three ways out again. The room behind the first door was filled with toxic gas. It was extremely harmful to their lungs and skin. There was a 300-pound weight above the second door. It'll crush anyone or anything that steps inside. And a hungry tiger was waiting behind the third door. Abby and Nina hesitated for a while and made the right choice. Which door did they choose? Nina took off her boot and threw it on the floor in the second room. The weight crushed the boot, and the girls ran into the room and closed the door. After that, they escaped through the window. Unfortunately, they got lost in a magical forest. It was cold since it was winter. After wandering around for a while, they saw three roads. All of them seemed dangerous. If they picked the road leading to the left, they'd have to go past some hungry wolves. And if they went straight ahead, they'd have to go through a village where werewolves lived. And the third path went over a lake covered with thin ice that could crack at any moment. Which way should they choose? They should follow the second path. Look at the sky. It's a new moon. And werewolves are only dangerous during a full moon. Nina and Abby got home safely. Oh, but no. someone had burgled their apartment while they were absent. They called the police. And they questioned three neighbors. Jeff said, I was away all weekend, fishing with my friends. Holly said, I didn't leave my home. I was painting the walls in my apartment all weekend. I love bright colors, you know. And Lucy said that she'd been singing karaoke with her friends and hadn't heard anything suspicious. Who's lying? Holly. The walls in her apartment are mostly white, but she said that she painted them in some bright colors. Nina got a job in a bookstore. On her first day at work, she found a vintage watch on the floor three people came over to claim it. Kevin said that he bought this watch when he got his first salary many years ago. Violet said that she'd inherited the watch from her grandfather. And Dylan said, This watch is priceless. My wife gave it to me for our fifth anniversary. Can you tell who owns this watch? It's Violet. She has the narrowest wrist. That's why the girl made an extra hole. Otherwise, the watch would slip off her hand. Abby went on a date with Jerry. He invited her over. But as soon as Abby got inside his apartment, Jerry turned into an evil wizard. He decided to make fun of her and said, I'll give you a chance to get free. Just make me breakfast tomorrow. If it's good enough, I'll let you go. And if it's bad, you'll stay here forever. <laughs> The next morning, Abby came to the kitchen and began cooking. When she turned away from the stove, Jerry added a whole box of salt to the pot. But when Abby served breakfast, Jerry understood that he'd have to let Abby go. What did she cook? She cooked boiled eggs. Abby got a new job. She had to assist a railroad supervisor. One day, they faced a huge problem. A faster train was approaching a slower one. According to the schedule, the slower train had to let the faster train go first. Abby offered to use an auxiliary railway line, but it was too short for the slower train. Abby didn't know what to do, but finally, she found the solution. 
What did she realize? The faster train should use the auxiliary railway line. Now the slower train can move back. When the main railway line is free, the faster train can go first. Abby got a note which said that a vampire family had moved into one of the houses in the neighborhood. Abby wanted to find evidence that vampires didn't exist. She found the street she needed. There were three houses there. Which house looks suspicious? Look at the footprints. They're pretty weird. They lead to and from houses A and C. It means people must come and leave these houses. As for house B, the footprints only lead inside. So this must be the vampire's house. A hat and scarf cost $110. The hat is $100 more expensive than the scarf. How much does the scarf cost? $5. It means that the hat is $105, which is exactly $100 more than the scarf. Mia was a shop assistant on a giant cruise liner. Once, she found an expensive watch in the boutique where she worked and announced it on the radio. Soon, four people showed up in the store. Each of them claimed it was their watch. Mia looked at all of them attentively and realized who the watch belonged to. Can you figure it out too? This man does have a watch tan line, but it's much bigger than the watch Mia found. This young girl already has a watch on her left hand. Why would she wear the second one? Mm. The elderly lady must be very absent-minded. Her dog is wearing her watch as a collar. The watch must belong to the teenager. <laughs> Nick was an experienced skydiver, but one day something went wrong. A strong gust of wind brought him to the forest. The man found himself among trees with no food or water. Soon, Nick saw four roads in front of him. One led to a super massive black hole that swallowed everything that got close. The second road ended in a sea full of sharks. The third road led to a mountain that was impossible to climb over. And the fourth road ended in a bottomless abyss. Which road should Nick take? He should follow the third road. No one says he has to climb over the mountain. He can simply go around it. During which month do people sleep the least? During February, it only has 28, maximum 29 days. A man is on the run from the police after he stole three massive gold bars. 30 pounds each. Oh, no. At some point, he reaches a long bridge that can support only 260 pounds. The man weighs 200 pounds. How can he transport all three gold bars in one go? He has to walk across the bridge while juggling the bars. It means that at any time, only two bars will be on the bridge, since the third one will always be in the air. Look attentively at these three men carrying a log. One of them is cheating. Can you figure out who it is? It's the man in the middle. For one thing, he's wearing a suit, which is a strange choice of clothing for such a task. Plus, his face is quite relaxed, and his eyes are open. It doesn't look as if carrying the lug feels like hard work for him. One evening, Emma went to take out the trash from her coffee shop. She was about to leave when she spotted something dark in the corner behind the trash bins. It was a young woman, and she was unconscious. Emma rushed to her. The girl's bag and smartphone were lying nearby on the ground. The first person on the contact list was named Big Sis. Emma called the number and heard a female voice. I found your sister lying on the ground. It seems someone hit her on the head. What? The woman was shocked and promised to come immediately. 
Next, Emma called the police. The sister and police officers arrived at the same time. Arrest this woman. She's behind the attack. Oh. And Emma pointed at the sister. Why did she say so? She didn't tell the sister where to come. How did she know the address? Oh. There are four cups on the counter, all of them upturned and hiding the same number of sweets underneath. Near each of the cups, there is a sign that says how many sweets are under it. The signs are five or six, seven or eight, six or seven, and seven or five. Only one of these signs is correct. How many sweets are there under each cup? Since only one sign is correct, the right number can't appear twice. Otherwise, more than one sign will be correct. It means that there are eight sweets under each cup. Luke took part in a scientific experiment, but something went terribly wrong. He ended up in a place where there was nothing but three portals. One of them led to a polar desert in Antarctica. The second one opened into a volcanic crater filled with molten lava. And behind the third portal, there was the age of dinosaurs, with huge diplodocuses roaming around. Which portal should the man choose? Luke would freeze in no time in a polar desert. Molten lava isn't even an option. But diplodocuses are totally harmless to people. They only eat plants. Look at the picture attentively and say which of these people is left-handed. It's the waiter. It's easier for a left-handed person to hold the tray in the right hand and deal with the food and drinks with the left, dominant hand. <laughs> Detective Henry Taylor was getting ready for work when he heard screams from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was locked. The man had to kick it several times before it opened. He found his neighbor, Miss Anderson, in the living room. She was tied to a chair. Oh, I'm so happy you heard me shouting. An hour ago, a man knocked on my door and said he was an electrician. But as soon as I let him in, he tied me up and took all the priceless paintings I had got from my grandfather. And then he just ran away. Hmm. Detective Taylor had to arrest the woman for staging the theft. How did he know? When he tried to get into the house, the door was latched from the inside. Who could do it if Miss Anderson was tied up and the thief supposedly ran out of the house in a hurry? You have five pieces of chain, and each of them is made up of three links. You have to make a long chain out of these five pieces. Welding an open link will cost you $3, and breaking a link open is $1. Can you make a long chain if you have only $15? First, take one piece of chain and break all of its three links open. It'll cost you $3, then link the remaining four pieces of the chain with these open links. Welding these links will cost you another $9. In total, you'll only pay $12. In the middle of a long flight, two passengers stood up and started to threaten the crew and passengers. They demanded $1 million in a helicopter. One of the criminals had a pilot's license and could fly a copter. When the plane landed at the nearest airport, the passengers got everything they had requested. A case full of money and a helicopter. But when they got inside, they didn't manage to fly away and were captured by the police. Why couldn't they start the machine if the helicopter didn't have any technical problems? The helicopter was okay, but there was no fuel in its tank. Michael got lost when he was walking in the forest. After hours of wandering around, he finally saw a weird-looking house that seemed to be deserted. Still, the guy decided to try his luck and ask for directions. But when he entered the house, the door shut behind his back with a loud bang, and he heard a voice, You've entered my home uninvited. You won't leave it easily. Oh, no. After that, Michael found himself in a room with three doors. The voice told him that only one of those doors led to freedom. Behind the first door, there were starving wolves. The second door hid a furious werewolf. And behind the third door, there was a huge, raging campfire. Which door is safe?
Michael should wait until the campfire goes out and get out of the house through the third door. Leo's boss yelled at the guy because he hadn't completed his weekly work plan. Now, Leo has to spend his entire weekend in the office, finishing his work. The boss took Leo's magnetic card so that he couldn't leave the building. Several hours had passed. Leo feels hungry. There's no water or food in the office, but there's a fridge and cooler in the next room, behind the door with a magnetic lock. On Monday, Leo gives his boss the completed report. Somehow, the guy managed to get food and water. How did he do it? Leo just went to the refrigerator and got himself some food. No one said the door with the magnetic lock had been locked. Mike wakes up in the back seat of a racing car. The engine is roaring, the wind is blowing in Mike's face. There's no one at the wheel, and a cliff is straight ahead. Michael's hands are tied. He jumps out of the car without hesitation and lands on the asphalt. Surprisingly, he doesn't get a single scratch. How is this possible? The car isn't moving, just its engine is running. Victoria approaches her house. The light bulb turns on automatically and lights her way to the door. Victoria inserts the key and goes inside. A couple of hours later, the doorbell rings. She looks through the peephole and sees a silhouette of a man wearing a hat. Victoria is afraid to open the door, but not because it's a stranger, but because it's not a human. Why does she think that? The light sensor didn't work, so there's no physical body outside. There's a huge airplane hangar on the edge of the desert. Pilot Tyler steps inside and notices a cat sleeping near the ceiling on one of the beams. Tyler decides to save it. There are no stairs and nothing else that can be used to get there. The only thing Tyler sees is a large puddle of water on the floor. So how did the cat get there? There was a pyramid of ice cubes. The cat climbed to the top of it and reached the ceiling. Then the ice melted and left the puddle. Margaret, Rachel, and Diana are walking down the street, sharing their plans for the weekend. The girls look rich, but only one of them has a lot of money. Who is it? It's Margaret. You can notice the key to a Ferrari in her bag. While leaving her house, Sandy takes her sunglasses out of her bag and accidentally breaks them. Now, she needs to buy new ones. Sandy calls a taxi and arrives at the street with fashionable boutiques. The best glasses in the city, the sign on the first building claims. The best glasses in the world is written on the second boutique. The inscription on the third store is the coolest. Sandy heads there. What is written on the third store? The best glasses in this street. Johnny is going through his bills. $50 for electricity, $39 for water, $70 for a bag, $448 for a new phone, $52 for dinner at a restaurant, $589 for a computer, $637 for a room in an expensive hotel. He has received a $978 bonus at work. But he also needs to buy a new fridge for his mom, and it costs $798. John has to leave soon, but he wants to know how much money he'll need. How can he calculate it quickly? He should use the calculator app on his phone. The simplest answer is often the right one. Detective Anderson investigates the case of missing purebred puppies. He has a list of three suspects. He visits each of them. The first suspect is a young girl. She says she spent the previous day with her friends. And she's also allergic to dogs. The second suspect is an elderly man. He says he hasn't left the house for the last few days. 
The third one is a famous video blogger. She says she was making YouTube videos all day. Which of them is lying? The first girl. She says she's allergic to dogs, but there's a bowl and some dog food in her kitchen. Fiona asked Betty to serve dinner for a witch party in her castle. Can you count how many witches have arrived at this event? There are 13 witches in this picture. This one is not a witch, it's a garden scarecrow. Betty needed to go to the store to buy some ingredients for dinner. She began to write them down. Milk, lemon juice, eggs, butter, oranges, baking soda, cashews, and vinegar. What was Betty making? Have you guessed? Betty was making a shopping list. Betty served the witches the first meal. Can you guess what exactly? The correct answer is onion rings. Here's a second serving. Can you guess it? It's blueberry. What about this dish? What do you say? It's popcorn. Here's the next one. Did you get it right? It's a strawberry milkshake. Fiona asked Betty to bring dried flowers to cook a love potion. Fiona stores all ingredients in her warehouse, but as soon as Betty entered the warehouse, the door locked behind her back. Betty searched this area and found some old furniture and an antique mirror. Suddenly, she noticed three doors, but there was a dangerous monster behind each door. The first monster can turn any living being into stone. The second one is very angry and strong. And the third monster has venomous teeth. Can you help Betty choose the right door? <laughs> Betty should open the first door and show the mirror to the monster so that it would turn into stone. Then she can escape through the first door. Betty took her phone and ran into the forest. It was pretty dark and scary. Betty stepped on a wasp nest. Wasps were everywhere. What should Betty do? Wave her arms to scare the wasps? Run away as fast as she can? Or walk away slowly? What do you think? The safest choice is to walk slowly. Waving hands and running is too dangerous. The wasps will get angry and sting her. Betty has returned to the party, but when she saw the crowd of witches by the fire, she got scared and ran away. Why? This lady by the fire is a ghost. See, she doesn't have any feet and levitates. Betty decided to hide in the castle. She wanted to call the police, but she couldn't find her phone. Betty questioned three witches. Georgina said, How dare you? I use telepathy. Phones and gadgets are for losers. Lillian said, I was outdoor singing with other witches. I didn't see or hear anything weird. And Nina said, I don't need to steal, honey. I can manifest any amount of money anytime. Who's lying? Georgina, take a look at her ears. She's wearing earphones, but she said she didn't use any gadgets.
Fiona got very angry when she found out that Betty had interrogated her dearest friends. Betty apologized. Fiona said, Okay, I'll let you stay, but you must answer three questions. Here's the first one. I've been here for a million years, but I'm never more than a month old. What am I? Have you guessed it? The correct answer is the moon. Here's Fiona's second question. I build castles and I tear down mountains. I make some people blind, but I help others see. What am I? The correct answer is sand. And the third question is, I can be long or I can be short. I can be bought or I can be grown. I can be painted or I can be bare. I can be round or I can be square. What am I? And the answer is fingernails. Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, she told the officers her story. I work in a museum. Yesterday, I took home several ancient books. I wanted to do some research, but then a blackout happened. I lit a couple of candles and continued my work. Suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. When I opened the door, someone in a black mask hit me on the head. When I recovered, the books were gone. Detective Anderson arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. After a bank had been robbed, the police found a bag with money in the park. It was lying among cacti. The police officers arrested three suspects. It didn't take long to figure out who the bank robber was. Do you know who it is? It's the man on the left. He's the only one with some scratches. They must have been left by the cacti. Detective Brown stopped a man leaving a clothing store. The sales assistant claims you've stolen some expensive gloves. These are my gloves. I've had them for ages, the man exclaimed. But the detective immediately understood the man was lying. How? The man wouldn't be able to use these gloves. They're both for the same hand. A family with two teenagers went on vacation to the seaside. They lived in a small bungalow, almost right on the beach. Everything was great at first, but two days after their arrival, oh no. their younger son went missing. The police had four suspects. They invited the guy's family to look at them. Maybe they could recognize someone. The teenager's mother didn't need more than a glance before she knew who was behind her son's disappearance. Who was it? It's the man wearing the missing guy's baseball cap. Michael was going home from the gym when everything went black. When the guy came around, he found out that he was in a locked room. Next to the door, there was a computer with a keyboard. On the screen, there was a riddle. Michael had to type the correct answer and the door would open. The riddle went like this. It makes two people out of one. What is it? Michael typed the correct word and the door opened. He was free to go. What was the answer? It's a mirror. Police detective Thomas Davis was walking along the street on a winter evening. Suddenly, he saw a person in a black mask sneaking out of a house through the window. They were carrying two large bags. The detective realized it was a burglar. He ran after the stranger, but they turned the corner and disappeared. Thomas understood that the criminal had hidden in one of these houses, but which one?
It can't be the house on the left. There are too many people inside. There are no footprints in the snow leading to the house on the right. It means no one has been there for quite some time, which leaves us with the house in the middle. Oliver was attacked in his apartment and taken to a hospital. The police had four suspects, all of them Oliver's neighbors. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park since early morning. Henry explained he'd been painting in his studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he'd been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Look at these people's hands and try to figure out who is lying. It's a bit strange that Jacob, who'd been repairing his car, and Henry, who'd been painting, both have such clean hands. But they could have been wearing gloves. At the same time, Sophia's hands and fingers aren't wrinkled. But it would be a natural skin reaction after three hours in a bathtub. How many bricks does it take to complete a building? Just one. It will be the last one. A man wanted to buy a used car. He found a nice one, which cost $9,000. He bought it and didn't pay a dime for it. How come? When paying $9,000, you don't need to spend dimes. Now let's check your math skills. How can you write 45 using only the number 4? Forty-four plus forty-four forty-fourths. Nathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware that the guy would return at midnight. They decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. No chores for them for one week. Not to fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room and started to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started meditating. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. She was going to sell it to the competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. When they came back, Victoria was already sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down. But after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Martin was driving past a bus stop when he saw three people standing there. One of them was Monica, a woman he had a crush on. Martin also spotted Sam, his friend, and an elderly lady who looked like she was freezing. Unfortunately, Martin had a two-seater car. What should he do? He should let Sam borrow his car and stay at the bus stop with the girl he likes. This way, Sam will be able to give a lift to the elderly woman, and Martin will have more time to get to know Monica better. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police he wanted to save a bag with money, but he had to lace up his boot right in front of the emergency kit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he recovered, the money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested?
All emergency doors open outward. Detective Adams came to the park to have lunch in the sun, but his attention was drawn by three men running around a fountain. Each of them was shouting, Thief! Catch the thief! The detective was confused. Who was the real thief? That's why he just kept watching. After some time, the distance between the men shortened. Detective Adams immediately realized who the real thief was. Can you figure it out too? If the third man was the thief, the second one would only have to turn around to catch him. The same goes for the second man, which means the man running in first is the criminal. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect. I've been feeling unwell all this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. I didn't even need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure yourself, the suspect said, and indeed opened his fridge. But the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out? First of all, the bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be that full. <laughs>